College football has been turned on its head over the last year or so, and the hits just keep on coming. Not even 12 months after Texas and Oklahoma accepted their invitations to join the mighty SEC, two more premier programs similarly jumped ship for another already stacked conference. In late June, USC and UCLA, pillars of the Pac-12 since the 1920s, announced their stunning decisions to join the Big Ten further altering the ecosystem of the FBS. Suddenly, an overwhelming percentage of college football's top programs have been consolidated into two Power Five super conferences, much to the dismay of those schools on the outside looking in and their conference overlords. So what prompted this dramatic realignment boom? And what does this mean for the future of the game? Let's break it down. Sit back, relax, and take this in. As much as college football likes to invoke tradition and history as its core tenets, there's one thing the sport collectively values most. Money. That's what prompted this wild realignment. Specifically, it's the promise of major media rights revenues that compelled these four flagship programs to leave their old conferences and bid farewell to their long-standing affiliations and rivalries. And in turn, it's the considerable brand equity and revenue streams that these schools have that made the SEC and the Big Ten, respectively, welcome them with open arms. According to ESPN, Texas and Oklahoma, historic powerhouses and two of the most valuable brands in college football, received roughly $38 million from the Big 12 in the 2020 fiscal year. The SEC, however, just finalized a new $3 billion media rights deal that will see the conference dishing out about $68 million per year to each of its schools. That's a serious bump. In fact, life in the SEC is so lucrative that there are rumblings that Texas and Oklahoma could leave the Big 12 before their current media rights deal expires in 2025 and simply pay a penalty for breaking their agreement. Meanwhile, in welcoming Texas and Oklahoma, the SEC not only bolstered its cachet and stature, but it added two of college football's highest revenue programs to its roster. In 2019, in fact, Texas generated more revenue than every other program in college football, according to the Wall Street Journal, while Oklahoma finished seventh. And the subsequent defections of USC and UCLA, who are now set to join the Big Ten in 2024, followed a similar script. Last year, the Pac-12 dispersed less than $20 million to each of its schools via broadcasting rights revenue. However, in the Big Ten, which is currently negotiating a new media rights contract that could exceed a billion dollars per year, USC and UCLA, Two of the Pac-12's most long-standing and valuable programs could stand to make roughly four times as much per season. That major bump in revenue was likely particularly appealing to UCLA, whose athletic department ran a $62.5 million deficit in 2021 and has been in the red for at least three years. Meanwhile, in adding USC and UCLA, the Big Ten, which was seemingly a Midwestern conference, not only added two high-earning, highly competitive programs, but it expanded its footprint all the way to California, effectively transforming it into a national conference, which will in turn make its broadcasting rights more valuable. Long story short, for all parties involved, and in both cases, it's about the money. And now, the SEC and Big Ten preside over 17 of the last 20 national champions. Furthermore, 16 of the past 20 Heisman Trophy winners played for schools that are now either in the SEC or the Big Ten. So what we're currently looking at is a college football landscape where only two conferences really matter and therefore everyone outside of the SEC and the Big Ten is now scrambling for survival. Good luck landing any five-star recruits, Oregon State. You play in the Pac-12. Most players with legitimate NFL prospects or a desire to win a national championship would probably rather play for a super conference school. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. If only two conferences matter from a competitive standpoint, only two conferences matter from a financial standpoint. After all, if nobody's interested in watching Texas Tech play Iowa State because no Big 12 team has a shot at a national championship, the TV rights money will inevitably dry up. And who knows what becomes of those programs then? To that end, multiple schools and conferences have already started exploring various options to secure their futures. Oregon and Washington, for example, reached out to the Big Ten in the wake of the USC-UCLA announcement to see if they could get in too. For now though, according to CBS's Dennis Dodd, the conference is standing pat at 16 teams. Meanwhile, the two reeling conferences, the Pac-12 and the Big 12, 
recently had discussions about a potential merger, with the idea of forming a third super conference that could hold its own against the SEC and the Big Ten. Those talks, however, ultimately fell apart. But this is just the beginning. Rest assured that every school and conference on the outside looking in will leave no stone unturned in their attempt to retain their relevance in a radically reshaped college football landscape. Then again, we shouldn't presume that the SEC and the Big Ten are done consolidating their power either. They clearly have no qualms about poaching marquee programs, regardless of the broader implications for college football, so why should they stop now? Yes, folks, the era of the Super Conference is upon us, and college football may never be the same.